Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing how to make paper flowers with the Cricut. I made this mason jar using a stencil from the Cricut and I'll link that video down below if you are interested in watching that. And I decided to add flowers coming out of the mason jar and I thought this would just be cute to hang up for Valentine's Day decor and I will just show you how I put this together. For the materials, I used the blue light grip mat, which I highly recommend when using paper material. It makes it so much easier to take the paper off of the mat and prevent it from ripping. I'm using a 50 sheet pack of cardstock that I bought from Michaels. It's 65 pounds and it's eight and a half by 11 for the size and it came in five different shades of pink. I would recommend checking the edges of the cardstock just to make sure that's not white. If it is white then when you make your flowers you'll be able to see that and you can see here that the color is on the edges of the cardstock. I would also highly recommend some type of quilling tool. I'm using this one that I found off of Amazon and I will link that down below. And Cricut also has a quilling tool on their website. You can see there is a little slot that you slide the paper into which makes it so easy to roll the flowers. And you will also need a hot glue gun. And now I'll show you in Design Space how I found my flower templates. So I have a blank canvas open up and I am going to go to images and I am going to search for my flower templates. And for these flower templates, when I would search for flowers, it was so difficult for me to find these. I had to search and search for it. So I wrote down the codes for these flowers. So I will just leave those below in the description box. So if you want to use these same templates, you can just type in those codes in the search box and you can find it easily. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm going to type in this code here and it always, they all have a hashtag before it so make sure you have that hashtag in there when you search for it. Okay here's my first one I am going to select it and hit insert images and then I'm going to upload three more so I'm going to go back to images and I will do this oops, I'll do the same thing I'm just going to type in the codes for the next three flower templates. Okay, we have all of our flower templates here. I'm just going to move these out so it's easier to look at it. And then another thing that I wanted to show you, if you couldn't remember which code went to which flower template, you can right click on the layer panel, go down to image info, and it shows you right there. So that's kind of nice just to see that there. So now I'm just going to size these. So for the flowers, I'm going to be doing two of each template. and kind of how the paper flower sizing works if you make one of these three inches wide it'll make around a one inch flower so I want to make it a little bigger than that so for this one I am going to make it I'm gonna do six inches and then I'm going to make another one that is eight inches so I am going to duplicate this so I'm gonna go over to my layers panel and hit duplicate and then I am gonna make that one eight inches and then for this one this next one I'm gonna make both of these six inches as well I'm gonna duplicate this template and this template as well and I'm going to make it the same size I'll do six inches for both so all you have to do is click duplicate and then click on the other pink flower and hit duplicate and this is really looking like a mess on Design Space, so hopefully that's not freaking anyone out. But I'm going to zoom out, and I might just move these around so it's just kind of nicer to look at. And then the last flower template is this one here. And I'm going to make that one 6 inches, and then I'm going to duplicate it and make another one 8 inches. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to keep the color the same on all of these because I'm going to be doing different shades of pink for each one. So I'm just going to leave the colors the same. And then I'm going to actually click on make it. I'm not going to try to arrange it or attach it or anything. I'm just going to let Design Space um, do that itself. So um, I'll show you what happens when I click on make it. It'll separate each color um, onto different mats. So this one I only put on one mat because it doesn't fit onto um, two mats. So we have two of these colors and then we have our next color. And then these last two are both six inches and they actually fit all on one mat. So it'll put it all on one mat. So the next thing I want to do is click on continue. And then I have it set to cardstock on my dial and now I'm just ready to show you on my machine how I cut these out. I set my first color cardstock on my blue mat and you want to make sure you line the edge of the cardstock paper at the way top corner of your mat. Then the Cricut will start cutting. After it's done cutting, I lift the paper off of the mat and the reason why I like the blue mat is it just makes it so easy to pick the paper right off of it because it's just not too sticky. I also like to use this little spatula tool and this came with the Cricut tool set and it really helps to just get started picking up that cardstock off of the mat. Then I will have my machine cut the rest of my flowers. You can see here the flower templates that I had two cut on the same mat did not fit all the way on the cardstock. So I'll show you really quickly on my Cricut Design Space how I made that mistake and how to fix it. I got to check this when I had my flower templates on the mat. The material size is set to 12 by 12. So I need to change it to 8.5 by 11 and it will automatically put it on two different mats. It thought that my material size was bigger so that's why there was two on one mat and I completely forgot to check that. Another way you could go back in and change it to another mat, if you keep it at 12 by 12, you can select the flower and select the three dots and hit move to another mat and hit new mat choose the color and hit con confirm and then that will bring it onto two different mats as well. Um, it's probably just easier just to go to eight and a half by 11 but that's how you switch it and I will just click on continue and have my machine cut these. And here's all of my templates cut out. I'm going to start rolling my first paper flower. I place my cardstock in the slot of my quilling tool. I like to have the top of the template facing away from me and the tail of it coming towards me. You push your finger up against the quilling tool to kind of get it going and then you just keep it tight as you start rolling the tool around the flower template and you want to make sure you are rolling it against that edge and just keep rolling it. When I get to the end, I just pop out my quilling tool. Then I like to kind of push against um, the pieces with my fingers just to try to make it look a little less stiff and form it a little bit more into a flower. And you kind of have to play around with it until you get to where you like how it looks. Once I'm done with that, I turn the flower around and there's a little circle piece at the end um, that you will attach to the bottom of the flower. I like to hot glue the actual bottom of the flower and then press the piece on top of that. And now I'm just going to show you how I do a couple more flowers. Here is a different uh, flower template. And I place the quilling tool once again on the cardstock. And then once again, you want to press your finger up against that tool to get it started. And try to keep it tight when you start rolling it. I was kind of getting out of the frame here, so I'm sorry about that. I switched it to a different angle, and I hope that you can see what I'm doing here.
It's okay if it starts to not fit on the quilling tool. You can just work your way down the tool and eventually I just pop it off and start rolling it myself. Once you have it all wrapped around, you can loosen it a little if it's wrapped around too tight and kind of play around with it to make it look how you want it to look. And it definitely takes some practice making these flowers. It's really not too hard, but I'm still trying to practice and play around with the flowers to figure out how I want it to look. I press more hot glue on the bottom and fold the flap down. After I have it glued once again, I like to kind of bend the petals back a little so it's not perfectly straight and you can also bend the paper at the beginning before you start rolling your flowers and I will just show you how I did that on my last flower template that I am going to make. And here I'm just going to show another flower that I put together. And once again, I'm just kind of playing around with it to kind of get it where I like it before I use my glue gun. With this last flower that I'm going to show you, I used a pencil to roll the petals before using the quilling tool and it kind of helps to loosen it up a little if you want to try this. And with this flower, I ended up rolling it a little tighter than I expected, and it made it smaller, but it's fun to see how they can turn out differently, and I ended up really liking it. And then I just made the rest of my flowers, and I arranged them on the board, and then I just used some hot glue gun and glued them down. After I had it all together, I decided to add three more flowers just to give it a fuller look. Then I took some twine and grabbed my glue gun and glued it to the back of the board. And here's how it looks in the end. I can't wait to make more flower projects and practice with it more. Let me know what projects you guys have done with flowers. And these turned out even prettier than I expected. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. Um, subscribe if you are new and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos. 